Yeah, welcome back to the lectures in chemistry. In this lecture, we shall continue from the previous screen, if you recall, on microwave spectroscopy of the diatomic molecules. Uh, we talked about the degeneracy of the wave functions. The wave functions associated with each of these energy levels have the same form as the spherical harmonics. Now, let us look at the energy level diagram for the microwave spectrum. Before I do this, let me introduce the convention that spectroscopies use. When we write the rotational kinetic energy, rotational energy, quantum mechanical rotational energy associated with the system as h bar square by 2 i into j into j plus 1. Let us write this out explicitly. It is h square by 4 pi square into 2 i j into j plus 1, which is h square by h square by 8 pi square i into j into j plus 1. Now, remember that there is another way of writing the energy in terms of wave numbers. Wave numbers nu bar such that E is given by this formula h c nu bar. Therefore, if we write the E rotational energy as h c nu bar corresponding to the quantum number j, h is a constant, c is a constant, h is Planck's constant, c is the speed of light. Therefore, there is no association. The nu bar is associated with the quantum number j and that is given by h square by 8 pi square i j into j plus 1 and therefore, if we write the wave numbers nu j, nu bar j as h by 8 pi square i c j into j plus 1. Spectroscopists have a notation for this constant and you see this is a molecular constant. h is a Planck's constant. The c is the speed of light and i is of course, the moment of inertia associated with the molecule. So, this is a constant associated with each molecule and this is given the symbol b and it is called the rotational constant for a diatomic molecule. Therefore, the value nu bar j is b j into j plus 1 is what everybody uses. Now, what is the dimension of b? It is very clear from the way it is written h by 8 pi square i c and the fact that j takes only j is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3 as quantum numbers. It is very clear that j does not have any dimension and therefore, the dimension of b has to be the same as the dimension of the nu bar j which is a wave number unit and the wave number unit is 1 by length. That is the number of waves in a given unit length, if you remember the definition of wave numbers. Therefore, this is per unit length or per centimeter in or centimeter inverse and let us see if B has the same dimension. H by 8 pi square I C is nothing other than H by 8 pi square mu r square C recalling the definition of i and h has the uh, units joule second which is kilogram meter square per second divided by mu in kilograms. It is a reduced mass. You remember mu is m 1 m 2 by m 1 m 2 and therefore, it has the dimension of the mass kilogram r square is meter square and c speed of light is nothing but meter per second and therefore, cancelling out the appropriate quantities what you end up with is 1 by meter thus 
B has the dimension of the wave number given that J is a quantum number. So, for dimensionally we are saying the right things it is correct and the quantity B is a characteristic of every diatomic molecule. How it is? It is dependent on two parameters corresponding to the molecule. One is the reduced mass of the molecule and the other is the interatomic distance between the two atoms in the molecule. Therefore, on both counts it depends on the given molecule, given diatomic molecule and therefore, B is very specific to the given molecule. It is a property of the molecule under the rigid rotor assumption. Now, let us look at the energy levels E as a function of nu j bar ok. That is what we want to write since the formula for nu j bar is B j into j plus 1 let us write a few values j equal to 0 corresponds to E 0 which is 0, j equal to 1 corresponds to E 1 which is 2 B j into j plus 1 j is equal to 2 corresponds to E 2 the second energy level which is 2 into 3 it is 6 B and j equal to 3 for example E 3 is 12 B and so on ok. Let us me write just the last next one more quantity j equal to 4 and write E 4 also as 20 B. Therefore, what you see is the energy levels increasing as a function of j square j into j plus 1 for very large values of j functions like j square. Therefore, you see that the energy levels increase and the differences between the energy levels which is what you see as a spectroscopic transition now will be determined by the differences that you have between these levels. So, let us draw the energy level diagram now E 0 is 0 this is j equal to 0. E 1 if we draw this it is 2 B. E 2 is 6 B therefore, on a scale of the appropriate energy if this is the increasing energy scale in this is the value E 2 is 6 B the difference between E naught and E 1 is 2 B, the difference between E 1 and E 2 is 4 B and write the next one it is 8 E 3 is 12 B and the difference between these two is 6 B and of course, E 4 goes out of the screen here is 20 B somewhere ok. Let me write at the top and the difference here is now 8 B. So, successive energy levels corresponding to the value j equal to 0, j equal to 1, j equal to 2, j is equal to 3 and j is equal to 4 as you see it. The successive energy levels differ by 2b, 4b, 6b and 8b. There is a selection rule in quantum mechanics for spectroscopic transitions uh, that can take place in a rigid diatomic molecule. The selection rule is that what transitions are allowed, what transitions are allowed or can be seen or can be seen for a rigid diatomic molecule. The transitions that are allowed correspond only to this value delta j is equal to plus or minus 1, which means that if the molecule is in the state j equal to 1, it can undergo a transition if a microwave radiation is shown on the molecule, it can undergo a transition to the next level j equal to 2 by the process of absorption or it can undergo a transition from j equal to 1 to j equal to 0 by the process of emission which is either spontaneous emission or stimulated emission either one of these processes, but it cannot jump from j equal to 1 to j equal to 3 under this assumption or within this model of setting up the rigid rotor Hamiltonian as a classical Hamiltonian converting it into the quantum and following through this rigid approximation. This model does not permit a transition from a j 
to a j plus 2 or a j minus 2 or a j to a j plus 3 or j minus 3. Delta j has to be plus minus 1. Now, with that you see that the first new 0 to 1 new bar corresponds to 2 b because that is nothing but the energy difference between E 1 and E 0. The new bar between 1 and 2 transition from energy level 1 to 2 is 4 b which is the energy difference between E 2 and E 1 and the new bar 2 to 3 is 6 b the energy difference is between E 3 and E 2 and what you see is nothing but if you were to obtain the spectrum of this molecule. You will see if we plot this as the wave number unit and we plot the absorption or the absorbance along the y axis, what you will see is a transition corresponding to the frequency 2 b, which is a transition from the ground state, rotational state to the j equal to 1 state. You will see one other transition if there are enough molecules in the j equal to 1 state, you will see a transition from 1 to t, 2. If we plot the absorbance, we will see a transition corresponding to 4 b. And if the molecule is in the j equal to 2 state, the absorption spectrum from j equal to 2 to j equal to 3 will give you a line corresponding to 6 b. So, what you see is a series of equidistant lines spectral lines. Remember that the energy levels are not equidistant. The energy levels separate or separate from each other by different orders, different uh, uh, values 0 to 2 b, 2 to 4, 6 b, 6 to 12. The energy levels are not equidistant, but the spectrum that you obtain which are due to the transitions between these energy levels, the spectrum is equidistant. Therefore, any two lines, adjacent lines, the gap between them gives you a value of 2 b. If you recall that b is nothing other than h by 8 pi square i c and if you know from the experimental spectrum the gap between two successive lines as 2 b, 2 b as the experimental value between two adjacent lines. Then a measurement of this from the experimental spectrum immediately tells you how to get the value for i by simple multiplication. And given that you know what molecule you are taking the spectrum on whether it is hydrogen chloride or carbon monoxide for example, molecules which have permanent dipole moment which are the only ones that you can see using microwave spectra. You see that the reduced mass is something that you know immediately and therefore, knowing i from the experimental spectrum allows you to calculate the interatomic distance in that molecule. The more accurately you know the value of b, the more accurately you can calculate the value of the interatomic distance and so on. Today, uh, after 50, 60 years of research in microwave spectroscopy, one can get, get the bond distances in experimental diatomic spectra up to about the third or the fourth decimal in angstroms, which is a very, very high level of accuracy. Therefore, experimental microwave spectroscopy is the most important means for determining the interatomic distances in a diatomic molecule experimentally and confirming the value through various theories. You can predict the value of the moment of the interatomic distance and verify with the experiments. Let us see a typical a few diatomic molecular spectra before we move on to the next topic in this uh, subject. I have, I will show you two spectra here. The spectrum that you see in this picture is the spectrum of carbon monoxide and let me read the lines of the uh, text here. It is uh, the, the x axis is the wave number axis which corresponds to centimeter inverse, 10 centimeters, 20 centimeters etcetera inverses and then the 
y axis corresponds here to the absorption, the extent of absorption and you see a beautiful equidistant spectrum as you see between the nearby peaks and the scale here tells you that this is an overlapping spectrum of two molecules, molecule carbon monoxide with the carbon isotope, the naturally abundant isotope C12 and O16, that is a lower line corresponding to these uh, ticks that you see here, the small, the, the large ones C12, O16 and then you have the C13, O16, its natural abundance of C13 is very low and you should know immediately why the isotopic masses will give rise to different spectrum. But for both cases what you see is between the different lines that you have here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or between the lines here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, they are equidistant. That the two different isotopes of carbon give two different spectra should be obvious from this formula which is given by that the, the 2B is nothing but 2H by 8 pi square IC and I is M1, M2 by M1 plus M2. Therefore, if the mass of one of the atoms is oxygen 16 and the other atom is carbon 12, you get one value for the this times R square, you get one value for the reduced mass and if the molecule is oxygen 16 and the carbon 13 then you get another value for the reduced mass and therefore you see that you get two different uh, spacings, rotational spacings for the same molecule dependent on the isotopic masses of the uh, compound. Now where do you think that this difference will be maximum? The difference will be maximum you recall the reduced mass will differ by a maximum value if for example one of the masses doubled. You take the hydrogen spectrum, take HCl and if you compare the hydrogen chloride spectrum with deuterium chloride DCl, you see that the reduced masses will differ by a large amount and therefore any replacement of a hydrogen by a deuterium or a tritium will give you a very large shift in the microwave spectrum of the compound. Therefore, isotopic masses do play a role and a significant role in the microwave spectra of many of these compounds. In fact, we will use this to determine all the different moments of inertia of a polyatomic molecule and that is how experimentally this is done. So the energy level is one part of the story. As you recall from the first lecture, in a spectrum we are interested in at least two or three different things and as far as this course is concerned we are interested in two of the three things namely the line positions and the line intensities. The line widths are very complicated, so we will try and avoid a description on line widths which is usually a subject for the advanced course in molecular spectroscopy. Let us look at the, we have looked at the line positions for a diatomic molecule as basically happening in a spectrum with respect to plotted with respect to the frequency or a wave number that it will happen at 2B, 4B, 6B, 8B, etc. So that is that the discretization of the energy of the molecule due to the fact that we solve the Schrodinger equation and which gives rise to quantum numbers. Here both the degrees of rotation degrees of freedom have the same moments of inertia and therefore we have only one free running parameter namely the moment of inertia and we get a quantum number dependence j into j plus 1 as the energy level. So in a sense the line positions are now very clearly understood as far as the rigid microwave spectrum of a molecule is concerned.